Rico? Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Kylie Wakefield. I'm the policy coordinator with the Surf Rider Foundation San Diego chapter. Um, I would like to reiterate some of the comments that Mr. Stevens brought up. Um, we support the staff recommendation. We agree that to do otherwise would directly contradict Chapter 3, Section 3252 of the Coastal Act, and despite what was presented, be contrary to the Encinitas LCP, the intent of that LCP. Um, as Mr. Stevens mentioned, the proposed project would be new development in a location that is currently threatened by an actively eroding cliff, and that would be subject to increased wave attack with future sea level rise. Um, again, I would also like to highlight what was, st what was stated that being perfectly consistent with the past is not only not required by any law, it would be dangerous. The Commission's mandate to minimize risk requires close consideration of all development, and that especially pertains to new development. Developments that were referenced and on which is being compared this development were different times and there were different properties along the bluff. Um, so from that point, the existing seawall is nearing the end of its design life and it was built to support a pre-Coastal Act home. This would be new development. Um, the seawall should not and cannot be relied on for determining the proper placement of new development on this parcel. Um, this was made clear in the staff report, so I'll move on from there. Um, to consider a seawall as a protection that would exist for the life of the new development, possibly in perpetuity, like I said, is contrary to the intent of the Coastal Act. Um, the purpose for the seawall's existence ceases with the demolition of the existing home. It was put there to protect that home. When that home is no longer there, its purpose is no longer in existence. Um, we, we support the assertions that was mentioned um, on page 33 of the staff report that it, um, what was not mentioned in the report was that it is not safe for 75 years. While the bluff is stable now with the current wall, that is not meant to exist for the next 75 year life of a new development. Um, also, additionally, contrary to the purpose of section 3251 of the Coastal Act, the new development would continue to block viewpoints and alter the natural state of the bluff. And that is particularly in regards to the basement development. Um, the basement proposed in the project plans would alter the natural state of the bluff in this location through its underground construction. Um, as provided in the staff report, removing the basement or relocating it to a safe location would require a great deal of alteration of the bluff and could even be infeasible and the excavation could threaten the overall stability of the bluff. Um, the plans that were proposed to remove the, the basement safely rely on the existence of the seawall to be in place. Um, and I would, just, I would just like to say that the perpetuation of coastal armoring to support this new development would prevent the landward migration of the sandy beach. That's a huge issue for the Surf Rider Foundation. All of this armoring that's in place, it allows to protect the, all the homes that are nearby. As was mentioned, if this property is removed, is that seawall gonna be removed? Or do the homes nearby rely on that same seawall? Um, we believe you gotta start somewhere, right? And moving forward with the intent of the Coastal Act that our natural bluffs be protected and that the sandy beach be allowed to migrate inward landward as natural erosion occurs is very important for protecting the beaches in San Diego, which are quickly deteriorating. Um, additionally, as stated by staff, denial of this permit application does not strip the property owners of all valuable use of their property. As, as was stated by Mr. Hurst, unfortunately it sounds like the home is getting older, but it is still a home by the beach. It is still a property that is livable. And as Commissioner Morales said earlier, right, those lucky enough to live next to the beach, the beach are quite lucky. And my whole life growing up, I had to drive quite a ways to get to the beach. And so they still have a viable use of their property. Um, so in closing, we urge the commission to continue considering the importance of coastal access to everybody when approving or denying permits. Um, the taking of public beaches for the protection of private property threatens the continued existence of one of California's most crucial public resources and denial of this permit is a positive step towards balancing the public interest with private property rights in conformity with the Coastal Act. Um, thank you for your time today. I'm gonna turn it over to Julia Chen here. Thank you, um, and I wanted to ask quickly if we could save one of those speaker slips should the commission decide to move towards um, approval, just a chance to respond to any conditions that may be proposed. So if we can save some time from those speaker slips for that, if that happens. You, you wanna save time for what? 
So right now the commission is recommending denial. Yeah. Um, so let's say the commission decides to go towards approval with conditions. Yeah. And I would like the chance with one of those additional speaker slips to address any conditions that I might be. I don't think that's, I'm sorry, it's not part of the way it's not we work. Oh, okay. Um, so I would just proceed with whatever you're going to say. So I would like to remind the commission that you have denied similar applications, such as Harris and Solana Beach, as recently as October 2018, which was not safe for its 75 years um, design life. Also, Martin and Lindstrom and Encinitas had very similar facts. Those were heard back in July of 2016. Um, they proposed basements and um, were, uh, can't read my own, own handwriting, <laughs> I was jotting things down. Um, they are, can enjoy an existing home already on the property. Um, <clears throat> to the point of the 22-year design life, um, that comes from mitigation. You can't, you can't have it both ways. If you are deemed to mitigate the impacts of a project, and you do that for 22 years, that's the life of the project, and then you have to come back and do it again. So, um, you know, during my time in this position, um, the commission decided to move away from the 20-year permit on seawalls and instead tie the life of a seawall to the structure. Many of you were here during those discussions. Um, if the outs of that um, approach, such as redevelopment, deed restrictions, and new construction are not utilized, seawalls become indefinite. If you follow the logic of the attorney who presented before me, there's basically no way to revisit these seawalls. You have one of those difficult decisions before you, and whether it's a 20-year limit or tying it to the life of the structure, it's always difficult to say no. Um, to the LCP language, um, I ha I'm going to have to go read my notes. Um, according to the LCP, three elements must be addressed in geotechnical reports. This was all re relevant in those Martin and Lindstrom denials that you guys um, did some years ago. It has to cover all types of slope failure, demonstrate a factor of safety against a fl uh, slope failure of 1.5, and address a time period of analysis of 75 years. Each of these applications wants to split those and not address all three. Taken together, it looks more at the life of the project over 75 years. So these seawalls should be removed for this new construction. Um, I would also urge you to consider the reverse takings implications of this project. Um, and the LCPs are supposed to be at least as strict as the Coastal Act. I will, um, you know, Surf Riders has, a, in our experience, we see coastal access and habitat often um, sacrificed over the fear of future taking claims, even if those fears are not well founded. Second, in order for t taking claims to be successful, the agency would have to take away a right that the homeowner had, a right that the homeowner had in the first place. For instance, homeowners don't have a right to create a, nu a nuisance or to knowingly build in an eroding coastline um, or later require shoreline protection or to rely on shoreline protection that thus destroys the public beach. That could be considered creating a nuisance. Um, and I guess, um, let me make sure I hit everything here. If you do, just change your mind, which I hope you don't. I hope you deny this project, um, thinking about the long-term implications of this decision. If you do decide to move forward with approval, um, I would recommend that the conditions address um, both current armoring and future armoring. So I'll leave it with that, and if you have questions, maybe you can ask me later. Thank you. Okay. David Grubb. Thank you, Madam one Chairman. More, there's one more on oh, the other side. Is there? <laughs> yeah. Oh. David Grubb. Oh, my Come on. So, three minutes? Uh, three minutes will be more than adequate. Thank you, sir. Um, good afternoon, uh, Commissioner Bochco and, and staff. I was going to be the cleanup hitter, um, <laughs> the one they wanted to hold back. So, um, that gives me a chance to, to say something that I think that the Commission needs to hear. When the Coastal Act was created, there was a compromise struck. There were many houses in places where they never should have been built. And when they passed the Coastal Act, they had to recognize that those houses existed and that therefore they were going to have to be entitled to protection. So they built in the notion that as those houses aged out, the protection would go away. 
and we could get back to a more natural state of the coastline. But as you are discovering, applicants and their attorneys and their architects are endlessly creative in finding ways to circumvent that original intent of the Coastal Act. But you have got to start somewhere to get back to it. We've got to say, we're going to draw the line. You cannot tear down old houses, build new houses, and still continue to prevent the natural erosion of the bluffs. Thank you.